All right, in the next few videos, we're going to talk about asses and bases. This is a very high yield topic for Lamcat, so you definitely want to make sure you understand this topic well. To begin, this video is going to introduce the basics, go over the definitions of asses and bases, talk about the ionization of water, as well as the pH and pOH scales. So, to begin with, definitions of asses and bases. There are two definitions you need to know for LAMCAT, the Bronsted-Lowry definition and the Lewis definition. Under the Bronsted-Lowry definition, an acid is called a proton donor. Now, you need to be a little careful about this definition because when I say that an acid is a proton donor, I'm not talking about an atom taking a proton from its nucleus and flinging it out to donate protons. Instead, it's more precise to say that you're actually donating a hydrogen ion. Remember, a hydrogen atom is just a proton and an electron. If you take an electron away, the hydrogen ion is literally just a proton. So that's more so what we mean. We're donating a hydrogen ion, which is just a proton. Bronsted-Lowry base is essentially the opposite. So it is a proton acceptor. So a molecule that will accept a hydrogen ion. For the Lewis definition, we're looking at electrons. So a Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor. And a Lewis base is an electron pair donor. Now you probably have heard about these terms before. We use them in organic chemistry a lot. And you probably also recall that Lewis acids are also called electrophiles and Lewis bases are also called nucleophiles. That's absolutely correct. And for these videos, we're not gonna be focusing so much on these Lewis definitions because this is a more of an organic chemistry topic. So in our organic chemistry videos, we'll discuss Lewis bases and acids to a lot more detail. For the rest of these videos on acids bases, we're gonna consider acids as proton donors and bases as proton acceptors. Okay, so now that we know the definitions of acids and bases, let's take a look at the auto-ionization of water. This is a process where water molecules in solution will spontaneously form the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion. And this is a particularly interesting reaction because if you look at what's going on, one of the water molecules is acting as an acid and the other one is acting as a base. So if we look at this molecule over here acting as an acid, when it donates a proton, what's left over is OH minus. OH minus is what we call the conjugate base. So essentially, the conjugate base is simply what's left over after the acid has donated its proton. At the same time, we have this other water molecule which is acting as a base. And it's going to accept a proton to form the hydronium ion, which we call the conjugate acid. So similarly, the conjugate acid is simply the base after it has accepted its proton. Now, what's interesting about this reaction is you have one molecule, water, acting as both an acid and a base. Most molecules don't have this unique ability to act as an acid or a base. And we have a special term that you need to know from the MCAT for these types of molecules. That's amphoteric. So we say water is amphoteric, and by amphoteric, we mean that it can act as an acid or it can act as a base. Water is not the only amphoteric molecule. We're going to see additional amphoteric molecules as we go through more videos, and we'll bring them up as we see them. All right. So now we know that water spontaneously forms the hydronium ion and hydroxide ion in solution. One thing we are interested in is, well, to what degree? How much ionization actually occurs? And we can figure this out if we take a look at the equilibrium constant for this reaction. And you recall equilibrium constant is capital K, and here we have a W subscript just so we know that this is specifically the equilibrium constant for the auto-ionization of water. 
Now, aside from the fact that there's a subscript, this equilibrium constant works the same way as what we've seen in previous videos. That the expression for Kw is the concentrations of the products divided by the concentrations of the reactants. The stoichiometric coefficients become exponents and you can see here we did not include the water molecules and that's because in the equilibrium constant expression we do not include solids or liquids. So now with our Kw, we can look at the value. The value of Kw is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. It's important to specify the temperature because again, you'll recall from our videos on equilibrium that the only thing that can change the value of the equilibrium constant is temperature. So if I'm giving you a value, it has to be at a set temperature. And at the same time, that also means if we were to change the temperature, that would change the value of Kw. All right, so multiple things in this expression. Number one, you do want to have memorized that Kw is equal to 10 to the negative 14. Number two, you also want to have memorized that the concentration of hydronium ion times the concentration of hydroxide ion always multiplies to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Okay, now another thing that's very interesting is if you look at this autoionization equation, you can see that every time you form a hydronium ion, you also have a hydroxide ion. So what that tells us is if we're dealing with pure water, the concentration of the hydronium ion is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ion. And if these two concentrations are equal and they have to multiply to equal 10 to the negative 14, that means in pure water, the concentration of the hydronium ion and hydroxide ion is 10 to the negative 7 molar at 25 degrees Celsius. So now we do know how much of each ion we have in solution. However, we generally don't report the amount of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions with molar concentrations. Generally, what we use is pH and pOH. So you will need to know how to calculate these values for MCAT, and we have equations for both. So we have pH is equal to negative log of the hydronium ion concentration Sometimes people just write negative log of H plus. So it doesn't matter which one you see, hydronium or just hydrogen ion, it's the same thing, pH. What you need to know about the pH is that generally the values range between zero to 14. And if you have a pH value of seven, that means your solution is neutral. If your pH is less than seven, that means your solution is acidic. And the lower it is, the more acidic the solution. If your pH is greater than seven, then your solution is basic. We can write a similar expression for the pOH. pOH is very similar. Instead of the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, it's the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Again, you do want to know how to calculate this. So we've got the equation right here. And just as with the pH, the pOH generally has values between 0 to 14. And it, in many ways, it's the opposite as pH. So if the pOH is less than 7, you have a basic solution. If it's equal to 7, it's neutral. And if the pOH is greater than seven, it is acidic. And one way we can work out this inverse relationship between the pH and pOH is there's actually another equation that relates the two values together. And that is pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So from this equation, you can see any time you're dealing with a solution with a pH less than seven, 
its pOH is going to be greater than 7. So that way, you know, the pH and pOH always match up in terms of describing the solution as acidic, basic, or neutral. Okay. So the last thing we can do is come back to this situation. We do have the hydronium and hydroxide ion concentrations. And with that, we can use our pH and pOH equations, which would tell us that the pH and pOH of pure water is also equal to 7. Okay, so that's it for this video. We, you can see here we've described the main definitions of acids and bases you need to know from AMCAT. And we've also introduced a number of important relationships in these equations that you want to keep in mind for subsequent videos.